Hello and welcome. You're watching the news tonight, your daily roundup of all that has been happening across India and the world. I'm Ishan Russell, and a big story tonight is the cotton crisis that created quite a storm in the upper house. All that and more in the next half hour. But first, let's take you through the headlines we're tracking right now. In the biggest attack this year, Mao's rebels ambush a paramilitary patrol in Chhattisgarh. 13 CRPF soldiers killed. Cotton crisis echoes in Rajya Sabha. Opposition charges government with ignoring the plight of the farmers. The Prime Minister joins Nagaland residents in the 51st Statehood Day celebrations, highlights central initiatives for the northeastern region. And pro democracy protesters clash with police in Hong Kong, defy orders to retreat after temporarily closing down government buildings. Right, our top story tonight Mao's guerrillas gunned down 13 CRPF personnel returning after a search operation in Chhattisgarh. The dead include two senior officers. The troopers were returning to their base after conducting a search for Maoists in Sukma district when they were attacked. The incident took place near Chinta Gufa area in the Sukma district. CRPF sources say the team was surrounded by all sides from, by the Naxals. The heavily armed Maoists then opened indiscriminate fire, leaving little chance for retaliation from the CRPF contingent and the district police. जो हमारे शहीद हुए हैं सीआरपीएफ के जवान उनको तो श्रद्धांजलि अर्पित करता ही लेकिन उनके परिवार के परिवार जनों के प्रति भी दिल की गहराइयों से संवेदना व्यक्त करता हूं और यह आश्वस्त करना चाहता हूं उन परिवारों की पूरी तरह से हमारी सरकार देखभाल करेगी जो कुछ भी माओवादियों ने यह कायराना हरकत की है मैं समझता हूं बहुत बड़ी यह चुनौती है और सभी को एकजुट होकर इस चुनौती का मुकाबला करना चाहिए वी हैव टेकन इट एज अ चैलेंज and uh, the incident is unfortunate but tomorrow morning we are going and uh, we will visit the place and we will find out what exactly has happened uh, but it happened during an operation which uh, has been launched against uh, nexalites in that area Along to news from the Prime Minister's maiden visit to the North East now, where uh, he lauded Nagaland for its achievements and urged the state to introspect on the ground that remains to be covered. On the 51st Statehood Day of Nagaland, Modi said his priority will be to develop the state's untapped potential. He recounted a slew of initiatives taken by his government for the North East. Prime Minister Narendra Modi greeted the people of Nagaland on its 51st Statehood Day. He also inaugurated the famous 10-day-long Hornbill Festival. Wearing a traditional Naga headgear, Modi enjoyed the colourful opening to the festival aimed at promoting tourism in the region. The Modi described the region as an untapped natural economic zone that needs to be built into a stronger, resurgent Nagaland. I must say, it's not only SEZ, it's NEZ. <laughs> when I say NEZ, I mean that natural economic zone. But unfortunately, it is untapped. It's my priority that how to nourish this NEZ for any. The Prime Minister said focusing on improving connectivity to the northeast is essential to attract tourism in the region. He said the centre will provide 28,000 crore rupees to lay new railway lines in the region. He also announced the setting up of six new agriculture colleges. The government also sanctioned 5,000 crore rupees for the northeastern region power system improvement project for six states to achieve power supply all round the year. Unless and until we don't have a road connectivity, rail connectivity, air connectivity, it's very difficult to develop tourism. And that's why for the development of this area and at the same time the development of the tourism, the 28,000 crore rupees provided for a new railway line projects 
and 14 new railway lines. Among other initiatives, the Prime Minister also announced two special scholarships for students from the Northeast, Ishan Uday and Ishan Vikas. Some 10,000 students are expected to benefit from them. Bureau Report, Rajya Sabha TV. Well, news from Parliament now, where the Standing Committee on External Affairs has asked the government to pass the Constitution 119th Amendment Bill 2013 as soon as possible. This bill is historic as it could resolve long-standing boundary issues between India and Bangladesh. Karan Singh placed the Standing Committee report on the Constitution 119th Amendment Bill 2013, asking the government to pass the bill as soon as possible. The committee has said further delay will only intensify the humanitarian crisis. While advising the government to take into confidence affected states like Assam, West Bengal, Meghalaya and Tripura, it warned of an influx of residents and the need to provide for compensation. This whole matter has been very long delayed and we are now hoping to uh, uh, have this agreement at long last which will be in the interest both of Bangladesh and of India. The Standing Committee felt the exchange of land enclaves in the Land Boundary Agreement will benefit India and help bilateral ties between India and Bangladesh. The Land Boundary Agreement 1974 was signed on the 16th of May 1974. It demarcates land between India and Bangladesh in states like Assam, West Bengal, Meghalaya and Tripura. The Bangladesh government ratified the agreement in 1974. But India was unable to do so because it involved a constitutional amendment in allotting the sovereign land. Constitution amendment bill required any transfer of boundaries, changes in the boundaries has to be approved by amendment of the constitution. That's why the bill. Last time there was a problem. For many years this has been pending. We had come to an agreement with Bangladesh several years ago. We were to ratify that agreement. Ratification is done by the cabinet. We did not ratify because parliament's approval is necessary for any exchange of territories. The Constitution 119th Amendment Bill 2013 seeks to amend the Constitution to give effect to acquiring from and transferring territories to Bangladesh in line with the Land Boundary Agreement signed in 1974. Uh, no, I think there's be, there'll be no negative impact. Mm. They'll have to be give and take, obviously, because the enclaves are there and this mm. adverse possession and all. But we've gone into it in great detail mm. and we've come to the conclusion that it has to be done. Mm. Provisions will be made for mm. anybody who's displaced. We've made a special mention of that. Mm. But this is something which is long overdue mm. and our relations with Bangladesh are now very good mm. and this is the correct time to do it. The Standing Committee said a demographic change in India and Bangladesh was expected to take place after the bill is passed. Not only would some Indian citizens return to the mainland from the previously held enclaves, but a number of Bangladeshi nationals would also get Indian citizenship after the area is ceded to India. The committee has asked the centre to provide suitable rehabilitation and compensation to people returning from the Indian enclaves in Bangladesh. Standing Committee report clearly talks of the impact and the aftermath of the passage of the bill. The governance mechanism of central government and states like Assam and West Bengal will be tested once the bill is passed by the parliament. With camera person Shivakumar, Rajkamal Rao, Rajya Sabha TV. All right, now on to the big story that we are tracking on news tonight. The opposition slammed the government today for the persistent fall in cotton prices that slipped below the minimum support price. The members demanded increase in the procurement price of cotton and paddy. The opposition shouted slogans, forcing two adjournments in the pre-noon session. Congress MP Ahmed Patel raised the issue in zero hour. He said cotton prices fell from 7,000 a quintal last year to 3,000, driving farmers to suicide. Former Agriculture Minister Sharad Pawar compared the MSP of cotton under the UPA government and the current regime. कपास की कॉटन की पर दे जो प्राप्ति हुई थी वो करीबन 70000 गांठ थी बेल थी वो घट के आज 35000 हो गई है और जो कीमत है पर क्विंटल 60000 से घट के 4000 तक हो गई है पिछली बार जब थोड़ी सी कीमत घटी थी तब लोग काफी चिल्ला रहे थे जो अदर साइड पे बैठे हैं हमारे प्रधानमंत्री जी तब मुख्यमंत्री थे तब उन्होंने कहा था कि जो 
کاٹن کا ایکسپورٹ ہے اس کو بڑھانا چاہیے اور ساتھ ساتھ یہ بھی کہا تھا انہوں نے بات کی تھی فارم فیشن فیبرکس فائبر اور فورن لیکن میں سمجھتا ہوں کہ فارم فیشن فیبرکس اور فائبر ان کے سبد کو سے غائب ہو گئے اور صرف فورن ہی رہ گیا تو کسانوں پہ دھیان دینے کی کافی ضرورت ہے سی سی ایم از پرچیز کاٹن ایٹ دا ایم ایس پی اناؤنس فار دا سیزن ریٹ از تھری تھاؤزینڈ سیون ہنڈریڈ اینڈ ففٹی پر کوئنٹل میڈیم اسٹیفل کاٹن اینڈ فور تھاؤزینڈ ففٹی پر کوئنٹل لانگ اسٹیفل لینگ کاٹن سو دس پرائز از پریکٹیکلی لیسر بائی ٹو تھاؤزینڈ روپیز پر کوئنٹل دین لاسٹ ایئر The BSP and the JDO joined ranks with the opposition to hit out at the NDA government while the SP highlighted the cut in procurement of levy rice in various states. Upping the ante, CPM leader Sita Ram Yachuri condemned the government for hollow bowl promises. The people who are not giving the rate of the farmers who are not giving the rate of the farmers and the rate of the farmers who are not giving the rate of the farmers केंद्र के सरकार के द्वारा ठीक ढंग से तय नहीं किए जा रहे एक गंभीरता का विषय है केंद्र के सरकार को ये चाहिए कि उनके okay. उत्पादन पर जो खर्चा आता है उसको ध्यान में रखकर उनका रेट तय किया okay. जाए उत्तर प्रदेश में पैटी किसानों की बहुत बड़ी फसल है और केंद्र सरकार सड़सठ परसेंट लेवी लेती थी लेवी लेने से किसानों का धान का मूल अच्छा मिलता था इस बार जो मंत्री बने वो अपने आप को गरीबों का मसीहा कहते हैं लेकिन उन्होंने लेवी सड़सठ परसेंट से घटाकर 25 परसेंट कर दी और एफसीआई को निर्देश दे दिया कि किसानों की पैडी खरीदेंगे तो एक अजीब हाल खाली उत्तर प्रदेश में नहीं हुआ उत्तर प्रदेश उत्तराखंड आंध्र प्रदेश पंजाब हरियाणा और देश के और हिस्से में मैनी प्रोमिस Many aspirations have been increased. No, no, no. no what, what, what? Point I'm saying, sir. No, no, no. Point I'm saying is that the Just government during the campaign has trying. promised 50% okay. more. That's Please, sir, promise 50% no, no, more than the cost okay. of production. The United Opposition demanded an immediate response from the government. The agitating members marched into the well and raised slogans. Deputy Chairman of Rajya Sabha, PJ Kuran, urged the members to give a notice for a discussion. When the members didn't relent, the chair first adjourned the house for five minutes and then till noon. House is adjourned for five minutes. Five minutes adjourned. India's total cotton cultivation area has gone to a record 126.55 lakh hectares this year. But cotton farmers are hit by falling prices, rising input costs and China's decision to squeeze imports. While the Pakistani government announced a cotton support price of 3,000 per 40 kilograms, China recently announced that it will provide a cotton subsidy of 2,000 yuan per ton. The Indian government too is mulling ways to bail out the cotton farmers. Kriti Mishra, Rajya Sabha TV. All right, to help us understand what exactly is this cotton crisis all about, we're joined by Krishan Beer Chaudhary. He's the president of the Bharatiya Krishak Samaj. Thanks very much for coming in, Mr. Chaudhary. Uh, very simply, I mean, what is this cotton crisis? How serious is it? And uh, what can the government do? It's all due to international market. The prices have crashed because China was the number one uh, importer of Indian cotton. Right. And now... Uh, China has stopped the import. It's an international policy impact on Indian cotton market. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, the productivity has also gone down in the Vidarbha area. Mm -hmm. Almost 10% uh, area is irrigated and 90% uh, rain-fed area. Mm -hmm. And the productivity almost gone down. It has come up to the two quintal per acre in the rain-fed area. And uh, irrigated, it's uh, uh, six to eight quintal per acre. Uh, but, but, but government have started the procurement at mm -hmm. the minimum support price. The Cotton Corporation of India mm -hmm. is procuring the cotton. That's the only way mm -hmm. the government can do it. All right, but as the opposition is saying, uh, the issue is not over MSP, the minimum support price and uh, the, the amount of uh, amount that would be procured. So really, I mean, this could really snowball into a political issue as well as for the farmers, really, this could impact the livelihoods. And given the fact that uh, cotton farming happens in areas such as Vidhar, which have been in the past uh, regions where farmer suicides have been commonplace, uh, this could be a big crisis coming up. 
Because uh, once uh, we introduced the BT cotton uh, crop pattern in India, the, uh, this year acreage have increased, but the cost of production is increasing due to the BT after implementation of the BT cotton. And one more problem has occurred: the length of filament have reduced uh, now from last two three years. It's reducing day by day. It's not good. But uh, last year production was the 410 lakh bales. Mm -hmm. This year it will be uh, around 400 lakh bales, and the Uh, consumption in the country is almost uh, 300 to 310 lakh bales. Right. We we were exporting to China, Bangladesh, Pakistan, Indonesia, Thailand, and now China because uh, due to international crisis, China have stopped, and uh, our extra uh, bales will be almost 80 to 90 lakh bales. Uh, we have the extra, and the Cotton Corporation of India is procuring and is storing the cotton that uh, the maintain right. the minimum support price. The government can intervene uh, through the system only, and they are storing the cotton. All right. So you think the government is taking measures, but uh, I mean, uh, reports also suggest that it's not just uh, cotton. There are other cash crops, for example, rubber, sugar cane. And, and one thing, one thing I will yeah. tell you mm -hmm. that uh, how the UPA leadership is raising the issue when uh, they couldn't uh, implement the National Farmer Commission report. It was uh, completed and uh, submitted to the government in 2007. And why, why they have not implemented? And uh, how they how they are raising this issue? It's a shameful for the leadership. It's right, not so, good. so you're saying a lot of politics behind it, but sir, coming back to the agrarian side of the problem, the fact that uh, the other cash crops such as uh, rubber and sugar cane, uh, the farmers are also facing similar scenarios over there as far as MSP and procurement are concerned. Uh, so is that a this could this be a growing headache for the Modi government? Yeah, it's a it's a headache in the present time. But but who is responsible to create this situation in the country? Why the UPA government uh, give the permission to import of the raw sugar in this country and it was make the refined and it has come in the market. The, in, the Indian sugar cane was in the field and the sugar uh, produced from the Indian sugar cane is, is still lying in the go downs because there is no market for the sugar and uh, if there is no demand and supply is the way. to make the things in a proper economic condition uh, you 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 right. make the you you make the liberalization policies you are implemented the whole economic situation have created due to the liberalization policies adopted by the uh, so called economists right. in this country and it's a international game is started why you remove the uh, import duty on sugar and why you remove the du import right. duty on the cotton who is responsible to remove these subsidies Uh, uh, would the import duty right all right mr chaudhry i think we'll have to leave it at that because we absolutely run out of time but uh, really uh, the political blame game on this particular issue would perhaps be the subject of much conversation in both houses of parliament in the coming days uh, thanks very much uh, mr krishan bhai chaudhry for coming in and sharing your views with us all right we'll take a very quick break right now but coming up on the other side the congress objects to the appointment of the lok sabha secretary general says the opposition should have been consulted over the appointment Welcome back here with the news tonight on Rajya Sabha TV. All right now the Lok Sabha speaker Sumitra Mahajan on Monday announced the appointment of the new Secretary General Anup Mishra in the house. The Congress however objected to the fact that the opposition wasn't consulted over the appointment. Manne Sadatya Gan Senior Uttar Pradesh bureaucrat Anup Mishra took over as the new Secretary General of Lok Sabha. Speaker Sumitra Mahajan announced 59 year old Mishra's appointment. Kesri Anup Mishra जो 1 दिसंबर 2014 से लोकसभा और लोकसभा का सचिवालय का महासचिव नियुक्त किया गया है इमीडिएटली कांग्रेस लीडर मल्लिकार्जुन खड़गे रोज टू ऑब्जेक्ट द मैनर इन विच मिश्रा वाज अपॉइंटेड द पार्टी सेड ड्यू प्रोसीजर्स वाज नॉट फॉलोड एज द लार्जेस्ट ऑपोजिशन पार्टी वाज नॉट कंसल्टेड हमेशा ओवर रूल करते नए नए रूल्स आप प्रेसिडेंट्स बनाते हैं उसके तहत ही उसमें ये है लीडर ऑफ द हाउस लीडर ऑफ द अपोजिशन और स्पीकर उनके कंसल्टेशन से आप अपॉइंटमेंट करते हैं तो मुझे आश्चर्य लगा कि इस विषय पर यह क्यों नहीं हुआ और इस किस वजह से यह नजरअंदाज किया गया 
Rejecting the allegations, the speaker said she had seen the rules and the appointment was her decision. I have followed the rules. I am sorry. I am sorry. मैंने भी इस हाउस में कुछ समय निकाला है हो सकता है आपसे कम ज्ञानी हूँ मैंने भी रूल्स देखे हैं आप कोई ऐसी कोई चर्चा करनी होती आप चैम्बर में आते Mishra was the former chief secretary of Uttar Pradesh he was currently serving as secretary transport department in the state he succeeds PK Grover who retired from the post with inputs from Sham Sundar and Pranav Goswami bureau report Raj Sabha TV Right, political news now from outside Parliament, where the Congress criticised the BJP-led NDA government at the centre for going back on its promises made during the Lok Sabha elections. The main opposition party released a booklet accusing the government of doing a vault farce on several issues during the first six months of its tenure. Upping the ante against the government, the Congress on Monday released a booklet listing nearly two dozen issues on which it alleged the ruling dispensation had done a U-turn. Today, the Congress party, Arun Jetli ji, Narendra Modi ji and Bharati Dhanta party want to ask this question. In six months, you have so much changed in your mind that you have so much changed in your mind that you have so much changed in your mind that you have so much changed in your mind that you have so much changed in your mind that you have so much changed in your mind. So, if this government will be remembered, then this government will be remembered as a U-turn government that has been remembered as a U-turn. Seeking to corner the government on the issue of black money, the Congress highlighted what it called the obvious contradictions in the statements given by the BJP leaders before the elections and after the assumed charge at the centre. How did this happen? You had one figure in the opposition, and when you came to the government, then you started to forget all the figures. So I just... और कांग्रेस पार्टी केवल इतना कहना चाहती है कि पुराने किए गए वायदे ना भूलें पुराने दिए गए फिगर्स ना भूलें ऐसा ना हो कि देश की जनता ही आपको भुला दे अपार्ट फ्रॉम द इश्यू ऑफ इंकर्जन एंड स्कर्मिश अलॉन्ग द बॉर्डर विद चाइना एंड पाकिस्तान द कांग्रेस ऑल्सो फोकस्ड ऑन द रूलिंग पार्टीज कॉन्ट्रोडिक्ट्री स्टैंड ऑन अदर इश्यूज इंक्लूडिंग डिस्क्लोजर ऑफ इंफॉर्मेशन अबाउट सुभाष चंद्र बोस द न्यूक्लियर लाइबिलिटी बिल the land swapping agreement with Bangladesh and also the deregulation of the diesel prices. Vishal Dahiya, Rajya Sabha TV, Delhi. And international news now and pro-democracy protesters are back on the streets of Hong Kong following clashes between police and protesters on Sunday night. Few government offices remained temporarily shut on Monday. As the violence flared up, Hong Kong Chief Executive C.V.I. Leung said police forces were tolerant so far but would now take resolute action against the protesters. After a short lull, pro-democracy protesters are back on the streets of Hong Kong. Thousands of protesters forced a temporary closure of government offices on Monday following overnight clashes with the police. Protesters wearing helmets, goggles, masks and self-made shields blocked the government headquarters and the chief executive's office. In the morning, you can see that the police comes and would like to make a leaf and with their force and they have used a lot of weapons that um, make us painful and fear but actually we, we do we do fear violence flared up as Hong Kong police tried to disperse crowds using pepper spray and batons 40 people have been arrested so far I think what happened last night fully demonstrates that it has far far away gone beyond what they have declared the police after repeated warnings, have to take resolute action. After the outbreak of violence, Hong Kong Chief Executive C. Y. Leung warned demonstrators not to come back, vowing stringent action against them. Fresh clashes erupted as China said it would not allow a UK parliamentary committee to enter Hong Kong as a part of an inquiry into its relations with Britain. Chinese officials even asserted its right to have a say in Hong Kong's foreign affairs. Outside Hong Kong, 
向英方表明了。坚决反对英国议会下院外委会派所谓的代表团赴香港进行所谓的。Even though a temporary shutdown is over, the situation remains tense in Hong Kong as hundreds of protesters are still occupying the area despite police presence. Bureau report, Rajya Sabha TV. Well, now officials from over 190 nations, including India, have converged for the UN Climate Change Summit in Lima. They hope to negotiate a binding deal to cut global carbon, carbon emissions. There are hopes that a global deal will finally be trashed out over the next two weeks after more than two decades of failed attempts to forge a global pact and a year before a landmark summit on climate change in Paris next year. Environment Minister Prakash Javrekar leads India's 17-member delegation. The summit comes weeks after U.S. President Barack Obama and his Chinese counterpart signed a historic deal under which the U.S. would reduce emissions by 28% by 2025 and China would reduce emissions by 2030. Well, a World Health Organization deadline to halt the deadly Ebola outbreak in West Africa has only been met by Guinea, according to latest figures. In October, the organization had launched its plan to isolate 70% of those infected and safely bury the victims in Guinea, Liberia and Sierra Leone by the 1st of December. But in Liberia, only 23% of cases are isolated and 26% of the needed burial teams are in place. And in Syria, Sierra Leone, around 40% of the cases are isolated and 27% of burial teams are operational. Meanwhile, Tony Banbury, the head of the UN Ebola response mission in West Africa, has said that there was still a huge risk that the deadly disease could spread to other parts of the world. Almost 7,000 people have now died from Ebola in West Africa and more than 16,000 have been infected. Some sports now. The Supreme Court today put the onus on the BCCI president in exile, N. Srinivasan, to prove that there was no conflict of interest amongst his role in the BCCI. The apex court took strong ex exception to his counsel, repeatedly naming Finance Minister Arun Jaitley in the proceedings, saying he was not party in the conflict. Srinivasan's counsel, Kapil Sibal, was stressing that a BCCI panel set up to probe the scam was constituted on Jaitley's suggestion as he wanted the inquiry to be free from BCCI's interference. Sibal argued that there was no finding either by Justice Mudgal Committee on, uh, or the Bombay High Court against Srinivasan on the conflict of interest issue and his rivals were only using this as an opportunity to remove him from the BCCI. जांच समिति ने एक जांच रिपोर्ट बना के कोर्ट के सामने रख दिया है तो उस जांच समिति को सामने आने में बीसीसीआई और एन श्रीनिवासन क्यों उस पे इतराज जता रहे हैं क्योंकि उस रिपोर्ट से बहुत कुछ चीज सामने आ जाएंगे जो कन्फ्लिक्ट ऑफ इंटरेस्ट का मामला हो या कवर अप द करप्शन का मामला हो well, that's it on the news tonight. We'll be back every night at 9 p.m. with latest from India and across the world. But before we go, the Border Security Force, the biggest border guarding force, celebrated its 49th Raising Day today. We leave you with visuals of the Raising Day celebrations. Oh, oh.